well, Andre, you ever feel like life is like a dance? You know, here we are again. <laughs> here we are again. Just back Nick, to square one. Nick bailed on us, you know. It's a little dancing rhythm we've got going. First you bail, then he bails. Seems like I'm the only one in step. You the know? only one remaining. Mm-hmm. We're just trying to be in step with you, Mark. It's not an easy thing. It's like the cha-cha. <laughs> 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 oh boy so all right year is a. Uh, how are you doing how's everything in your neck of the woods over in the in the united kingdom uh it's all it's all good we are we are starting to we had a a big announcement the other day which started to give us a heads up about the end of lockdown so we should be the the kind of assurance that we've been given is that we'll be sort of all legal social restrictions and things will be removed on the 21st of June. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. That's, uh, that's quite amazing. And then we're going to go through like gradual, gradual phase of easing out of that. So yeah, well, they're rolling out the vaccines like crazy. Basically that's, that's going to get everything back to normal. Oh. We got the Oxford, we got the Pfizer, and everyone's just getting like my, my chest is just getting hammered every week. I hear about like ten new people who are who are vaccinated. So wow, yeah, they're, they're slowly milling it through. Wow, crazy, and uh, no one's a zombie yet, so that's a good sign. Well, I tell you what, I did. I did. Have you seen I Am Legend? I was I thinking have. this is it. This mm-hmm. is I Am Legend time. This, this but time. no, not yet. Not yet. No, the good thing is, good. Mike, I live by. The- see and we all know that in the events of a zombie apocalypse the best thing to do is get on a boat head to the water and go out to sea uh-huh. not too far not so you have to deal with the high seas just just a little bit mm-hmm. no that sounds fair the fact that you see an end in sight due to this uh, vaccine is quite amazing um i think for us it's more like a um I don't know just a on and off on and off squelch it you know you got three cases here three cases there just keep the doors closed you know uh we're 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 the elves in uh, lord of the rings you know just uh don't let them in everything will be fine just keep them out and uh and so we'll we'll see how that that, <laughs> that rolls out you mean you mean the orcs no the elves aren't the elves are like oh Riverdale? the elves yeah 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 what's up yeah the the problem is it's really hard to just you can't keep your borders shut forever and it's really hard to manage something as contagious as this. It's just basically like, it's like the flu. And it's yeah. going to keep coming around every year. Yeah. So the kind of sh- shut the borders thing isn't going to work. You're going to need to. Well, unless, the unless they get us the vaccines as well. And maybe that's the plan. Just keep rolling until. Yeah. Well, that's what that's. What yeah. yeah. You got to go to the vaccine. Route, definitely. Got to do it. Got to do it. Um, so I suppose we could talk about vaccines. That's, just, that's quite a cool two kingdom issue. That's very controversial. But I think another thing. Uh, that's on people's minds Mm -hmm. and it might be good to talk to you about this now coming to the end of your uh well not the end yet but you know the whole potential end i don't know it might even you know who knows it'll happen but yeah well they said like oh yeah end end on the 21st but now there's a whole new variant so don't get too excited basically so yeah basically i'm not holding my breath and also i mean who knows if the vaccines apply to all the variants you know that's true no it almost certainly doesn't yeah so I think um, I think one of the things everyone's sort of bracing for a little bit is how exact how long is this going to last? Uh, but but even more pertinent, I suppose, is with these uh, lockdown scenarios, uh, you know, all over the world and the MacArthur right sort of movement, so, you know, yeah. s- is sticking sticking it to the lockdown, you know, regime and and um, yeah. and and so forth. I think I think this is be- going to become an increasing thing if it doesn't go away. And um, I think um, I've had a few emails come my way, um, people that are in the States, um, even people that are in New Zealand, just, you know, when is, the, where is the line? You know, just trying to get some advice on that and, mm-hmm. and, uh, and, and see what exactly um, needs to be thought about to know, you know, what is, what is considered rash? Why is it rash? Why, you know, when do we need to, you know, take a back seat? When do we need to step forward? It's a very important issues, of course. And, um, and I think that the two kingdom, uh, well, actually let's, 
step back from two kingdom, even just the Kleinian covenant theology slash common grace idea, uh, redemptive covenant, uh, common grace covenant definitely speaks to this at some level. So, um, you know, to have a covenantal worldview is helpful uh, with the foundations that, that, that Klein gives or that the Bible gives that Klein exposits. And, um, and so, you know, it'd be worth, worth chatting that through and then also just, you know, just see how you feel now, you know, what, did you feel like you ever got close to that line? where you thought, okay, we're just well, going to go ahead with this. So our, our take on this was um, that the moment, it, so the, the problem is our government did make a clear show of respecting religious freedom and not wanting to toy with that and, and everything like that. So, mm-hmm. you know, we've had our FIEC national directors had a direct line to the, um, to one of the, the 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 prime ministers who's working directly under Boris, right? So, um, you know, we we've been able to put our cases and frustrations to them, and we've been able to to receive clear feedback on what it is exactly and what are the reasons. And um, so, I think that our general thing was: look, they're not saying churches can't meet indefinitely. They're not opposing religious freedom um, per se. I know that's debatable because some people are going to say, well, any imposition like this is an imposition of religious uh, freedom. Uh. But uh, And to some extent it is, but I don't know. I, 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 maybe it's just because I, I have a very simplistic way of thinking about stuff, Mark, but it just seems to me like there's a kind of nuance here, uh. you know, where it, it's obviously not an attack on on religion or Christianity or whatever, it's obviously an effort to restrain a virus, which affects us all. So, yeah, yeah. so there's kind of there's something kind of different about it. So we, we were like, yeah. we're not going to defy the government mm-hmm. um, because, it, because it does, it could arguably fall into the category of obey your government. Mm-hmm. And, um, and also love your neighbor. So, yeah. I mean, there's clear biblical precedent to abide this kind of thing for a time. If it was indefinite, if it was without an end in sight, and if there weren't clear reasons for it, mm. then obviously it would fall into another category of um, forcing us to disobey God. But, uh, you know, given that we could create something of a virtual supplement, mm. you know, it, I mm. know it doesn't, the online stuff doesn't replace the in-person stuff, but it's better than nothing. Mm-hmm. So we were able to connect in that way. Mm-hmm. And uh, given that, um, and we could keep the rhythm of the Lord's day going that way. Mm-hmm. And given that, um, you know, given that there was an end in sight, we just thought actually, you know, we're just going to, we're going to, we're going to go along with this. Mm-hmm. And as soon as we're allowed to meet, we'll meet. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And, and so I think, um, you know, just for those who don't know, um, you should know if you've been listening to this for a while, but, uh, Andre is a pastor in the UK and um, has been doing that for a while. I'm a pastor in New Zealand, um, most know, I think, but just in case you don't. So we're in different contexts a little bit and uh, obviously both uh, pastoring churches there uh, in those different con- uh, different contexts. But um, I think, you know, one of the things that you touched on there and one of the things that's super important, because I think people start asking the question, you know, how long is long enough? And, uh, you know, what is it? Three Sundays, four Sundays, three months, four months. You know, you get that sense with MacArthur. The clear feeling I got there was they were just like, well, we're, we're calling bluff on the stats a little bit. You know, we're going, it's, it's yeah. an overreaction. You know, they, they just. Yeah. And, and there was inconsistency. So like you're allowing, I don't know, casinos to be open but you're not allowing churches to be open it, it was that kind of thing as well right I think. so i suppose for for me those are pr- potentially helpful things to look at um and could inform the question or, or the answer to the question but i think the the main thing has to be very very clearly um you know to to have in your mind that there is only one time when we could legitimately rebel against the government you know and for all other times you have to be exemplary as citizens mm. and that one yeah. time is when they are uh you know persecuting you or, or telling you at, to um stop worshiping god you know or, or uh you know you know actually singling out the church for religious persecution or shutdown or the, you know um and and you know even the reason why that's important to say is because even the issue of 
inconsistency might not be enough because i mean really you're not asking for a government to be perfect in order to obey it quite the opposite no. you know i mean if you no. think about the new testament i'm i'm looking at uh, first peter the sunday i mean my goodness you know nero was the uh, was the guy and so he's going uh, you know obey obey the emperor for your, for the lord's sake um you know be subject to every uh, institution um, this is, you know, you want to be exemplary. You want to have them look at you and go, why are we persecuting Christians? If that ever happens, you know, there's just no reason that they can put on, on any of your, you know, and if you're defying the government and you're getting thrown in prison for it, don't call that persecution because that is not, that's, that's, you know, that's suffering, but it's, it's, you know, it's on your head. Don't, don't raise the, the Christian card on that one. Um, but you know, so even it's, a, it's almost like you can't just say, well, I'm only going to obey if the government's like at this perfectly consistent, you know, form of bureaucracy or, or just whoever's in charge has really thought about all the angles no. because my goodness, you know, I mean, yeah. that and more. is. Which I, I think we forget. We were talking about the Roman Empire. Like, I, yeah. think, I think we forget that. But there was very little Christian sympathy from the, <laughs> from the Roman Empire. And this empire. was like there pre- was very great little Christian character. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is just, I mean, when Peter said those words, it's not quite at the point of like, you know, the, that high point of persecution, but yeah, as you say, I mean, my goodness, there was, you know, no one's, no one's caring about Christians at that point. So, and there's no fairness as we would demand. There's no, um, there's no consistent, you know, bureaucracy. There's no, there's nothing like that. It's just, you know, Hey, obey. Um, sometimes I feel like, like with the command, uh, even just in that same text, actually, where, where Peter speaks to wives and husbands, you know, and he, and he says, um, you know, um, uh, wives be subject to your husbands or obey your husbands. And, you know, and, and don't, don't sort of pull some revolutionary stint on the social order. Um, husbands, you know, respect your wives as, as the weaker vessel, but as co is, I mean, it all sounds like if we ought to be, if we had to be consistent in, in applying that idea, because it's almost like what, what Peter's doing is just filtering all that through. He's going, I want you to be an exemplary citizen. I want you to be in a, in a less than ideal scenario because you're a sojourner. You're, you know, you're, you think about the suffering you're going to go through is just a temporal thing in light of the eternal glory. So I want you to be exemplary in light of that. And then husbands, wives, I want you to think about your situation, be exemplary. And he's just like working the same principle through even if it's not ideal, you know, obviously not giving license for abuse and that sort of thing, but, yeah. but at the well, same even, time, even to slaves and masters, slaves and masters. Yeah. So just very, so it's almost like we, uh, we're so quick to say, well, you know, um, they're being inconsistent, you know, year and there. And so therefore we're going to just break the, break the law and rebel and so forth. But, you know, we, we can't, if we had to apply the same thing to, to the Christian home or, or even to, you know, believing and unbelieving spouses and, and, um, and slaves and masters, I suppose, uh, you know, have, have their uh, application in various forms and bosses and employees and so forth. I think you'd be, you'd have havoc very quickly and you certainly wouldn't have a good witness. You'd have a stained witness, I think. Um, you know, it almost reminds me a little bit of those things you see where, you know, uh, you'll have almost like that, that, uh, you know, what is that crazy Baptist church, that Whisperer Baptist church, uh, Whisperer, yeah, yeah. you know, and like, and they'll be throwing pickets all over the place. And then, and then, you know, mm -hmm. someone says something bad and then, oh, we're being persecuted. You see, cause this is what the Lord said would happen. Well, yeah. at that level, you know what, not only are you not being persecuted, you're just being stupid. Yeah. And then number, number two. Um, you're staining the, the the witness of the gospel everywhere. You know, you just be so unhelpful at every level. And so I think I think we, we're in a very similar risk when you do things like MacArthur did. Um, and, and I'm not not really wanting to target in on that. I don't know enough of the facts there. I haven't really been following it. But but um, mm -hmm. just you know, that's a risky move, and you want to make sure that you've 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 got more than just inconsistency at that point. Um, and, and even when the facts aren't straight, like you see, this is the thing. If someone comes along and and says, well, you know, these uh, these mm. facts are not quite what they should be. And look, we're calling bluff on all of this. <clears throat> I mean, are, are you a doctor? Are you a doctor that works for the government? Yeah, yeah. Are you the yeah. one that they've asked to give an assessment? You're an economist. You're a statistician. Yeah. You know, and yeah. even if you are, then are you, you know, is that really your role? No. I mean, fine, have your opinion. But, you know, at the end of the day, you've got to just know your station, you know. <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and without yeah. that, it's... Well, it's, listen... I mean, listen, if you put stuff to the vote, you're going to get stuff like Brexit, you know? <laughs> totally. I mean, yeah. 
where people vote first and ask questions later. Like, you know, there, there, <laughs> yeah, for a, don't get me wrong here. Democracy is definitely the best available political system that we have, mm -hmm. but it is far from perfect because yeah. it requires people like me to vote on stuff that I have absolutely no idea about. Mm -hmm. So, you know, even if you take a general election, um, you know, I, <laughs> I have to, I have to vote, you know, very often it comes down to economic policy here because like, similar to New Zealand in the UK, it's not like you're choosing between a party that opposes abortion and a party that's right. Yeah. Exactly. Everybody's on the same moral wave. Like there's, there's literally yeah. no difference between the parties. The only thing it comes down to is economics, but, yeah. and even then, like we're all on the socialist end of the spectrum. So it's not, it's not like you're choosing between socialism and capitalism or something yeah. like that. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it, it's pretty much all of a piece. It's just economic strategy to get out of a recession. Mm. Now I haven't got the foggiest, not a clue about what economic strategy is going to get out of a recession, but I have to vote for it. Yeah. Um, it's, it, it comes down to me and that's a little bit absurd. It's the, it's the absurdity. It's the elephant in the room in, in democracy. Mm. And I think we just need to be careful because in a democratic world, we feel like our vote really counts because it does count, but our opinion maybe doesn't, doesn't count as much as our vote, if that makes sense. Yeah. And I like, think so, the ring of, I mean, it'd be different when you're a, a Roman citizen or, uh, you know, you're under some sort of uh, monarchy <clears throat> where they're not giving a lot of sway to, to, to democracy and voting and so forth. And uh, I think the tenor then is just to go obey the king. You know, that's basically yeah, what, we're, yeah. what we're doing over here. And I think what we, what we somehow, we sort of imbibe is you don't really have to obey anyone, you know, uh, they're yeah. obeying us. And that's right. And that, you know, and again, not knocking democracy as you were saying there, but it's just, you have to, that's your blind spot. Then you have to keep that in mind yeah. with what is being said in the new Testament yeah. about your need to be yeah. obedient and submissive and to be subject. Yeah. You yeah, know? and and it goes like you say the the whole principle of submission in scripture is not submission when you agree. You know yeah. that that isn't submission. That's not submission. Yeah. So, so the the whole thing about when do you submit to your elders? When do you submit to your to your husband? When do you submit to your master? When do you submit to your authorities? It's at those moments where there's a tension, mm. and they're commanding something and you don't want to do it. That's mm -hmm. when you submit. That's the whole that's the whole idea. And yeah. you do that in order to live this peaceful and quiet life so you go under the radar so you can carry mm. on with the gospel mm. and mm. um and it, again like you say i even in a democracy you know you might technically be keeping the letter of the law but there's a real spirit of you know stuff the government they mm -hmm. don't know anything uh -huh. um i know far better they're ridiculous they're all muppets that kind of thing and that uh -huh. sort of attitude is exactly i think what peter's getting at mm -hmm. You may be observing the letter of the law by not rebelling against the government, mm -hmm. but the spirit of the law isn't there. So you're still being um, an unhelpful citizen, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. by doing that. So yeah. you can it's not critique exemplary. policies. Yeah. You can, yeah, it's not exemplary. You can critique policies. You can give informed opinions. You can mm -hmm. share mm -hmm. helpful comments and resources, mm -hmm. even mm -hmm. if they are controversial. And critique, you know, but there's nothing the, wrong with the critique element, but in its place and with due course and respect for and so yeah. forth. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, and obviously what we're assuming now is that the line hasn't been crossed when we're saying all of this, okay, which is kind of, uh, I suppose, you know, we're, we're getting maybe a little bit uh, caught before the horse. But, you know, I think if we had to just just pin this down to, you know, obviously you've got some text to go to Romans, First Peter. Mm -hmm. uh, why are we thinking in this way? Well, it's a very explicit sort of, you know, uh, instructions there for Christians. It's just mm -hmm. bottom line. And, and what, you know, it's the argument from, from uh uh, the greater to the lesser, I suppose, in that, you know, if it's true for them under that scenario, how much more for us? Um, and so that would be the one thing. And then, you know, you even have a clue in those texts, like if, if first Peter, if we go on that, you know, I'm, I'm taught that conduct yourself as sojourners and exiles, right? Obviously abstaining from passion uh, in your time of pilgrimage, but you know, keeping this eternal mindset, but you know, that, that ties in with everything he's been saying there and that, you know, this is, this is something that has to guide you. And that, that right there is where I think you do see a, a very solid thread going to the covenantal undergirding and foundations to the exiles, to the sojourners, uh, exiles being the, you know, post uh, Babylonian mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. thing. And uh, the sojourners being the patriarchal community prior to Israel. And he's pulling on, Hey, 
like Abraham really endured a lot and gave stuff away. And like the patriarchs didn't fight for the land, but was were, were happy to suffer themselves to be wronged. So as yeah. to, uh, you know, have this peaceable relationship, this tolerated sojourning, uh, you know, experience uh, for, for the sake of, of, of um, moving forward in God's plan. And like the exiles were, were willing to work. And yet we know the story with, with Daniel and, you know, there were, there was a line and he was willing to go to the lion's den, so to speak. But, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, it, that didn't happen very quickly. And he was able to take on pagan names and, you know, work as a prime minister for, you know, I just promise anyone listening to this, that working for Babylon was, was a lot harder than any, any gig that we've ever had in, you know, and more stretching. And yet he did that and did that well in an exemplary way and wasn't, wasn't compromising on his faith at all. So, um, you know, what, what's undergirding all of that, I think, is that you have a real doctrine of common grace that is part of this thing that subserves the, 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 the covenant of grace and God's program in history for the redemption of his people. This common grace is real. It's legitimate. There is a legitimate place uh, that God has given to ameliorate and preserve uh, humanity for the sake of the progress of the gospel and, and for the sake of his kindness toward humanity, giving them an opportunity to, uh, you know, not be swallowed up whole within seconds by their own uh, anarchy and whatever else they can uh, devise within their own sinful hearts. God preserves us. There is a restraining measure that he puts on things. And he does this through, you know, as, as Paul himself says, you know, the, the, the magistrate is his minister bearing his sword, mm -hmm. not in vain. Yeah. You know, he will execute yeah. wrath uh, in, in a temporal sense. Um, for the sake of the uh, of this uh, preserving ameliorative end, even when it's abused, even when it's corrupted, that's still a real thing. And so, you know, same thing with medicine. And you know, we could almost deviate onto vaccines, and you know, what should we get a vaccine? Shouldn't we? Well, of course you should, right? It's like, duh, it's common grace. So, if mm -hmm. if you do think that common grace is grace, and if you do think it has a place in 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 this world according to God's own ordination then it's really obvious that you should go ahead and get a um a vaccine obviously you know again assuming all things else being equal and it's not like turning people into zombies then you might have to be able to say something about that but, <laughs> but assuming uh you know just everything else is going well and it's just there it is it's god preserving protecting that's coming from a place a political sort of arena you know you've got people that have to make decisions for the welfare of the country that's a government thing that's not your role that's for no. you that's that's put in place for you and uh, you have to respect that honor that and that's the whole idea you're you're certainly doing it because out of sheer obedience to the new testament precepts there but but even further i mean you're seeing why they're saying what they're saying because you see from the moment of the fall god institutes this this city for Cain, essentially, that um, despite his uh, unworthiness, uh, he is able to dwell in safety, and um, you know we see art and culture flourishing, and and uh, and this all serves the purpose of the gospel, as announced as early as as Genesis three fifteen. Yeah. So there we go. You know that's the, that's some of the thing. Yeah. Now we haven't talked about the line yet, but that's some of the under, undergirding um, covenantal foundation. Yeah, that's right. And just to just to say that you know as you read through church history, you see kind of the fairness or the attitude towards the church from the government wax and wane, you yeah. know? Um, but, but what never changes is the fact that that government is placed there by God and that it should be submitted to. And as far as, you know, it, obviously we're going to talk about the line, but up to the line. Mm -hmm. And so that, that common grace principle remains and, and whether it looks like, you know, the Holy Roman empire, Mm -hmm. or whether it looks like the Ottoman Empire, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, or whether it looks like, you know, something totally different, uh, you know, some barbaric tribes from the north or something like that, you know, it, yeah. it, it doesn't, you know, that, that part isn't, isn't the part that consents us. So we're not trying to create Holy Roman Empires or, or, or trying to, to destroy Holy Roman, right. Roman Empires, right. we're working with the government we get, you know, yeah. all the time as God's yeah. common, covenant grace. Yeah. Common yeah. grace. So, um, you know, where is the line? Okay, so here's, here's what I have in mind. Here's the kind of thing that I think, you know, these are just, we're shooting examples out and they're kind of random at, at some level because who knows exactly how, you know, the nuances and the details that would unfold. But for example, you know, I think it's yeah. not that mysterious. I just feel like that's the constant drum I want to beat uh, in that, you know, if someone ever says, okay, listen, guys, we figured out that actually 
it's just not going to work in our country because of ongoing viruses and the expense of vaccines and so forth. We're not going to allow religious gatherings anymore, you know? So all religious gatherings now we'll allow sporting events, we'll allow whatever, but you know, with, with constraints, but no more religious gatherings. We just don't deem it essential. So, you know, we're just for the sake of, of, you know, there we go. The embedments of uh, uh, pres preservation and uh, of a country. We've just made that ruling. At that point, they've stepped over the line. You know, that's just that. At that point, they're saying you can't worship God, and you know, at that point, you have to you have to, in good conscience, obey God and not men. But that's very clear. You know, that's um. That, there's nothing. There's nothing vague or nebulous about that. That's just you know. Okay, good. Um, let's go. You know, and and then we're into Peter again, and he's going ready yourself. Gird, mm -hmm. gird up your minds, you know, be ready for this mm -hmm. always. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Even at that point, you know, don't get yeah. stroppy, but suffer well, suffer in peace, you know, as, you know, as someone that's exemplary, that, that that's yeah. causing those who are persecuting you to wonder, why, why are we doing this again? Uh, be yeah. ready to give an account for the hope that, you know, that not, no one's going to ask you for the hope that you have when you're so attached to this little life of yours, that you're so just, you know, uh, uh, what is the word? Just, just disjointed by the fact that you know your little routine yeah. has been moved, and it's always petty, you know. And yeah. uh, no one's going to ask you, "Hey, what's the hope that you have that's keeping you so yeah. amazingly kind and calm when that's people right. hate you?" Yeah. You know, uh, you, people need to think about that because everything from yeah. clips on Facebook through to media through to, um, you know, it's it's devastating. The witness, you know, no one wants to know what's going on in yeah. a Christian's mind because of what's being said. I think this is the interesting thing. So you get this it is a contradictory criticism from kind of the secular world into the church, but it's a criticism nonetheless. So you, the, on the one hand, they're like, Oh, we don't care about the gospel. We just care, care about politics. So therefore we don't care about what you, you have, or, or we are, we care about this life. Now you guys can live for the next life if you, if you want, but, but we're not interested in it. But at the same time, so, so that's one sort of criticism, like the uh -huh. church, you know, is is just irrelevant right? mm -hmm. <clears throat> but um but at the same time they're not impressed when we do enter the political sphere because um it's just what everybody else is doing mm -hmm. and the unique flavor of politics that we bring is detestable to them mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so it's not it's not like by suddenly by suddenly entering the political sphere and talking about freedom of speech and, and rights and all that kind of stuff, there's a place for that. You know, there are Christians mm -hmm. who work in politics, who mm -hmm. work in ethics, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, and, and who are, who are battling it out on the same playing field as everybody else. But mm -hmm. when churches get involved, mm -hmm. um, it doesn't impress anyone. It's not, mm -hmm. it's not a, it's not like everybody thinks, Oh, look at how good, you know, how, how great these churches are, how active they are in political rebellion against a corrupt government. Like nobody's thinking that, especially not with, with vaccines, mm -hmm. you know, everyone is just thinking you Muppets, you're, you're messing it up for the rest of us, you know, yep. just because yep. of your stupid fundamentalist idea, you know, that's what everybody else is thinking. So it's yeah. not like, it's like you say that, you know, it's um, what it, it, there, there's an irony in that we feel like, like we should be more, more involved in the affairs of the world. But when we do that, it actually communicates in some ways to, to the world that we care more about this world than we do about the gospel. Mm -hmm. And so it's easier or, or easier is not the right word, but in some ways it's a healthier witness mm -hmm. if we transcend the mm -hmm. constant shift in kingdoms and policies in this world, you know, not sure. in a sort of apathetic sort of way We're citizens, we vote, you know, we'd be good citizens. So we vote for the things that we, we care about. And as, as uh, when we're involved in our secular vocations, we seek to be salt and light within those secular vo vocations. Mm -hmm. So it's not as though we're uncaring or detached or not trying to influence things, mm -hmm. but we're just not doing it as a church versus government sort of thing, because that just doesn't come across well. Right. So I think, um, you know, there's, there's one example of one line um, that is very obvious. And for me, you know, that's like, okay, now you, everyone has to bow down to the statue. Go, you know? Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. you say, no, that's just, yeah. that's, you know. No like, prayer, but to anyone, but, you know, what's your PM's name again? Uh, Jacinda. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> can only pray to just send it. <laughs> yeah you know or, or something like that I and mean, historically that's that's when it happens you know that's where you know you've got got something that is a direct attack and compromise on the christian faith you can't do it 
and you got to be willing to throw in, be thrown in the fire as a result of, of, you know, standing firm there. But that's so clear. It, it takes it right out of the, the realm of nebulum. No one's, yeah. you know, no one's, I'm sure you can have people compromising and everyone's going to be fighting about it all the time. But for anyone who actually cares about what's going on, I mean, it'll be very clear. Okay. There we go. We got it. We're all in agreement, you know? Yeah. And, 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 Everyone's saying that this is all, this is a subtle move to strip away religious freedom. It just comes across a little conspiracy theory. And like, and like, obviously, I mean, <laughs> the thing is, here's another yeah. little covenantal foundation thing. Just a little lesson from Genesis all the way through is that yeah. the city of man is constantly getting taken over by the cult of man. And, mm. you know, guess what? Satan's always been at work to use the city against the people of God. This is what happened prior to the flood. This is what happened after yeah. the flood. This is what happened, yeah. uh, you know, at all these crisis points throughout redemptive history. What, are they stopped tapping now? No, of course not. There is a constant mm -hmm. move to to do something diabolical but like what is that a surprise for us as christians i mean come yeah. on you know that's where we go well they can try yeah. but again th there is a oh, lord holy roman has... empire oh that's gone okay would you just crack on crack on with you it crack on and be able you, to crack on with it and you trust that you know at the end of the day there's when we're talking about common grace and god's preserving action through common grace we're talking about a sovereign god yeah. who you know will not allow his own common grace to be uh, altered at that at structural level. And if he gives it over for a season to allow for one of those crisis points or great persecutions, well, you know, that too is in his will. You know, at the, at the mm -hmm. end of the day, we simply trust in the king who is seated on the throne, who reigns yeah. and uh, who, who rules. And we just, yeah, we just do what exactly what the apostles did when when they were in that scenario and, you know, when it got worse. And I mean, if you need a, a sketchbook on this, just go pick up Fox's Book of the Martyrs pretty much and and just roll through it and just see, you know, you just keep just keep ministering the gospel and, and God God sorts out the details at that level. Um, and um, and not to feel that that we have to create some environment that's good enough for us to do that. And um, yeah, I think yeah. I think that's just crazy. I don't I honestly I don't know how we get there to that mindset after reading the New Testament. You know, I just let alone the old testament. I mean the it just seems yeah. like how you know it, it's such a strong christendom right. fantasy that I, to be honest is mm -hmm. good it's always it's it's good when that gets removed because then we're yeah. dealing with uh, things as they are well well i think it is that though it is just the history so it you know it whether it was the holy roman empire or the british empire christianity was king and it was all part of it and so we are just still dealing with the hangover of that we we we've forgotten what it means to be exiles yeah, you know, we've been, uh, you know, at various points, you have various groups that have always known that. But, you know, like if you ask Baptists <laughs> yeah. you know, in the 1600s, they would have told you what it was yeah. like. Yeah. But um, but it was it's it's that still dealing with that that hangover of it, of that. Actually, we want England or America or New Zealand to be a Christian country. Mm -hmm. And and we've just totally forgotten about what it was like in the first century when there was no Christian country at all. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Surely another key line though is going to be yeah. the, what does it mean to forsake the gathering? Mm, mm, good. You know, because the, you know, obviously that's another command in scripture that says, do not forsake the gathering of the brethren. Mm -hmm. You know, the coming together, and I don't understand that to mean the Lord's Day gathering uh -huh. of the church. Uh -huh. And so, um, you know, there's a clear command to, to not forsake that. But so I guess one of the things we have to ask is, is the government requiring us by saying that, you know, you can't meet, whether it's for a time or a time or half a time? <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, whether I like uh, that. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was, uh, um, that was deep. So I did there. Just that was like, a, what is that? That's the gospel yeah. age. The gospel age, you just said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know. Yeah, if you go M so whether, whether or not it's, it's for like, a, for, for, for three months or six months or just during the pandemic or whether it's, you know, permanent, are we, are we getting asked to forsake the gathering of the brethren? So are we breaking one commandment? Mm. Are we being forced to, to choose that? Because mm. obviously we always obey the government unless it requires us to, to disobey God. And yeah. so th that I think would be one key objection that actually we are being asked to disobey God. So one of the things I think um, that's important, again, it doesn't, well, I suppose it does come out of a, a covenantal foundation, just trying to sort of root out a bit of a theme 
um, you know, in terms of how that can help. But, but uh, like when you come to Hebrews, for example, you know, I suppose we're just on to direct sort of hermeneutics and application really, because, you know, that, I mean, people make much of that, that uh, statement, you know, don't forsake as is the habit of some, but I think, um, you know, you, you got to remember it's a, it's a statement within a context. It's, it's a, within a big argument, you know, it doesn't just apply the same way, obviously in every scenario, you know, it's got to be applied properly as you would any other text. And so, you know, when, when the author of Hebrews is saying that he's talking about, you know, Jewish believers who are otherwise reverting back to the shadows and uh, to, to lessen persecution, you know, to, to take the edge of that ostracizing that they were experiencing, you know, so that they could, you know, do whatever they needed to do, send their kids back to the synagogue and be educated and so forth. They, 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 were, they were just going back to the shadows uh, and therefore forsaking the gathering. So when he says that, he says, don't do that, you know, and remember, we got these great apostasy warnings over there, which I think are also wrapped up in a lot of unique context. You know, I mean, it's, it's just different when you are around apostles who, you know, their shadows heal people, <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, it's, it's, yeah. it's a little bit like being a Pharisee around Jesus uh, when he has done all these amazing things and then attributing his work to, to Satan, right? There, there's something you you know, certainly we can all have that kind of hard heart, but we, not all of us are around the earthly incarnate ministry of Jesus while he does these miracles. And we just have to be, uh, you know, honest about that. And same thing with the tasting of the heavenly gift and so forth. I mean, there was something profound happening, you know, as these, this covenantal transition, there we go. There's my covenantal angle. Um, covenantal transition was taking place from the old to the new covenant. The temple sacrifices were being uh, shown to have now been fulfilled and so forth. Um you know, that that's what that's geared towards. So, mm. you know, if you're going to apply it to a COVID-19 scenario uh, where we have virtual church for a moment for the sake of loving our neighbor and, you know, just getting through a really global crisis of, of, of quite uh, amazing proportions, um, you know, if you're going to apply that to that, you've got to just make sure that you're applying it the right way. So, you know, things might be like, um, you know, we're taking, we're not meeting together, uh, to take the edge off persecution would be the issue there. You know, if, if there's mm -hmm. some, so let's say, for example, here's where, one way I see it happening. If, if, um, if, um, you know, let's say, take my previous uh, example there, so they come along and say, you know, okay, there we go. We're going to make a final ruling on this. No more church gatherings ever. That's it. Especially Christians, <laughs> you know, just, just no, no more. And, and then you go, Oh, well, that's okay. Can we meet online forever and ever? That's okay. You know, because we just want to take the edge off that persecution. You know, that, that I think that would fall within the clear purview of, of what, what's being said there in Hebrews. And in that sense, that brings some some sort of tangible concrete in there to don't forsake the gathering. It doesn't mean like every single Sunday, you know, if you miss a Sunday, you've, you're under those, you know, apostasy passages and so forth. It, it, it means that if you are willing to take the you know, to, to compromise the faith ultimately in a very clear way in, in you know, f from this time forward, uh, that is an act of apostasy. And that is something that you must be warned against just, yeah. just as Israel fell yeah. in the, in, in the wilderness, you know, um, you have to worry about that kind of thing being a, a symptom of, of, of unbelief that will, you will not get into the promised land, you know? Um, so very, very clear oh, yeah. ideas there. Yeah, yeah, and no, I agree with that hundred percent. And I wonder if there's also a sense of, um, you know, what the whether or not you're forsaking the gathering does depend a little bit on the elders as well. So, you know, I don't know. I mean, in exceptional circumstances, there are possible scenarios where the elders will say, well, "Listen, we're not going to gather that week." Or we're going to meet monthly or something like that. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I don't know, think of it. There's been an earthquake or a tsunami or something, you know. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, that's there, the right category. Of, yeah. 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 Well, it is. It's except it's exceptional circumstances caused by things outside of our control mm -hmm. that just make sense to uh, you know to 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 not meet every week or in, in that way. I mean, it's it, a lot of it's going to be determined local church to local church by the by the eldership. So, what is the gathering? going to look like yeah yeah and um and at that point if the elders are saying hey let's gather and you're saying let's not gather mm -hmm. or actually no i'm, I'm done gathering mm -hmm. you know that's that's also another indicator yep. that something's not right it's whereas right. if the elders are looking at this saying now in this situation it's appropriate and right for us to meet online for a while so that we can 
obey the government so that we can love our neighbors so that we can contribute to the co uh, to the common good and you know I, I i just i can't see that as a forsaking of the gathering in the same way as what was intended in, in hebrews yeah and you know and if someone like let's say you take a macarthur kind of figure and he's like going 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 her and saying all right well we're meeting and then you say well actually i'm not gonna i'm not feeling comfortable with that i'm going to another church you know that's fine you know i'm, I'm like that's not forsaking the gathering or you know because people pull those kinds of texts out at that point which is just it's not right that they do that um that's it's you know it's yeah. okay it's for someone of... to go to another church anyway you know it's not like you've got the the one true church it's okay it's okay to do that you know it's sure it's not ideal and but if that person you know comes to you in good conscience and says okay well i appreciate you guys are you know we're disagreeing on this this approach you know be praying for you really um but i i feel like i'm moving in a different direction uh you know it, you can go to another church and they've it, you know we're, we're you know there, there's a you know you can't the, the point i'm making is that there'll be a time when that can't happen you know when when the only church that you can go to is the church that said we're compromised you know and and it's just you you aren't even close to that scenario yet um and i think you know people have to just keep that in mind you know um it can happen i mean i'm okay with people leaving the church because they just have a you know personality conflict <laughs> you know uh, and because it's something you know it's just the re reality of the fallen world that we live in we still we just got hang-ups right and and as long as that person is gone hey listen i'm really struggling can i just go to the church down the road and i'm going okay well they believe the same thing we do and you know amen we're, we're we're all in the kingdom you know it's not like i've got some some hold on anyone uh sure you know all things else being equal go to that church go to the church that's going to prosper your soul so to speak you know uh why why that's not a problem so it's you know i think that's the first thing we just got to like open i'm not saying it's a free-for-all i believe in membership i believe in confessions i believe in uh you know the appropriateness of denominations <clears throat> the conviction that that's behind all of that but that you know we're not a cult you know and um and there has to and and churches shouldn't behave like cults when the pressure's on interestingly you know you see peter uh, deal with that as well where he he ends off the book just saying you know you need to love one another you need to bear with one another in love you need to uh press on together because i think the idea is when the pressure starts you know, you have these cracks in the, you know, any kind of pressure will, will, will exert things to their maximum and show all these signs of tension. And, and that's the point where we most be, need to be most generous with one another. Um, and I think what helps with that is if we all see the very clear line, it's almost like it reminds me a little bit of heresies, you know, you got to distinguish between heterodoxy and heresy, you know, otherwise everything's a heresy and you're the only true church before you even know it. You know, you've got to be able to go, all right, I really totally disagree with what you're saying over there. I really think you're wrong. But at the end of the day, this is not, a, you know, something that's damnable, something that you know, pulls you out of orthodoxy. And, yeah. uh, and, and I'm and willing I think to... Another, another thing to factor in there is that if you're just bouncing from church to church, because everywhere you go, you get rebuked by the church. And then instead of dealing with that, you just go to another church until they discover what what's going on in your life and they rebuke you and then you move to another. Yeah. Cause that's, that's not what you're talking about. No, no, you're sure. Talking, yeah. Yeah. I mean, talking about is yeah. that uh, look, love you guys, but they're just, you know, I'm just more in line with them down there. And at that point, if you say, well, you can't go there because you have to stay here. Like why, you know, I exactly. think that's, that's the yeah. key thing. So yeah, if it's the like, only okay, time that you... church doesn't believe in the Trinity. Yes. Then but, you got a real reason. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's so, like that church down the road, like um, you just have, you, you know, you get on better with the with the elders and and everything, and everything else is equal. You just gel better there. Um, then you know it's hard to, or like m most of your families down there, or, or something like that. You know, mm, mm. Um, it's very hard to find convincing reasons for someone to stay. Um, but you know, that's different to, there are bad reasons to leave a church as well. You know? Yeah. So, just, so maybe one of the things to just put out there, cause I know, again, this, I'm sort of reflecting on some emails I've gotten people are going, what do I do? You know, the church is just jumping ahead, like going crazy on this thing, uh, you know, wanting to follow a sort of uh, MacArthur like trajectory there. But it's, I mean, I honestly looking, I'm looking at it. I'm thinking this will be a terrible thing. Um, I, I don't agree with them. What do I do? Well, you know what? 
it's not the first you take a breath it's not the end of the world because you're not at the only true church in the world and so just go to your pastor go to your elders talk to them and say listen here's my honest conviction it's and think of it almost like talking about hey I've, i'm a calvinist i'm at a calvinist church but now all of i feel armenian or let's reverse that around if you want to be the euro in the story you know you're at an armenian church and you go calvinist and uh and and you know and then what do you do you talk to them and you go well i have a different different conviction on what this text says and now if that's a good pastor and a good eldership team what they should say is okay let's try and win you over can we try and win you over let's talk about it and if they if it's just not going anywhere you know they can't push it the next thing they need to be able to do is go well let me help you find the best what we see to be the most biblically faithful Calvinist church around. And let me introduce you to that pastor and that team and try and get you plugged in. So you're under pastoral care and, you know, so that we just are able to send you off a blessing and the Calvinist church, I hate to say, needs to be able to do the same thing to the Armenian church. You know, sure. I, I, I'm not an Armenian, but I, I know some guys and let me just try and help you find a good church rather than some crazy uh, off the wall sort of open theist church or something, you know? And, and at the end of the day, that's what we're doing. You should be able to do the same thing with this. Okay. Thanks for letting us know that you feel this way. Uh, this is why, let me try and win you over. This is why we're going ahead. This is what we're seeing as a problem with the government. This is what we're, why we're going to meet. Okay. We can't win you over. All right. Let me try and find you the best possible church that we know is not compromising, but is ultimately taking a different stance on this. Let me suggest that you, you know, go and check them out because ultimately i care more about your soul and that the fact that you can go to church and be you know and and, and sit under the preaching of the word without having this this bitterness arise within you i think that should be able to happen you know so i, I think there's a place for healthy debate and you should try and convince someone of the rightness of your position but you should be able to uh release them of course we're, we're assuming yeah that there's no compromise or no heresy involved uh, so you see how that thing becomes such an all-important point you know it's yeah. Because you need a line, you need you need you need to be able to say no. Sorry, you can't go to that church. Why? Because they have denied the divinity of Christ. That's why. You know, um, it, it's just very clear. No, sorry, yeah. you can't yeah. go to uh, that church because they've decided to forsake the gathering. Period. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. And this, by the way, isn't you know we're talking about submission and submission to church elders. Yeah. This isn't contradicting that because if you do go to your elders and you say to them, look, this is where I'm at and you give them the opportunity to win you over, but that is all part of the submission deal. You know, that oh, is totally. submitting to them. Yeah. Um, this is, but but if we dormant. act yeah. like, it, yeah, but if your elders begin to act like they are the only church, yeah. then, um, then that is just, well, A, it's just not the reality and um, B, it's very unhealthy. So um, well, they're infringing their part of the arrangement as well. I mean, they, they can lead you according to the word. You know, you're submitting yeah. to the word through the means of the eldership, not not yeah. to some you know persona. Um, exactly. And yeah. and yeah, so everyone's got to sort of keep within those those bounds, otherwise it gets crazy. So you know, with this issue, people have to realize if they even if a church eldership has a conviction to go ahead and meet despite what what the, you know the law states or something, um, you know, just to keep in mind that okay as long as you knuckle down on, on, on the word here and you're able to, to kind of draw the line there and understand that you've taken an interpretation that sure you're fully convinced it's the right interpretation. Amen. That's good. But you know, to know the difference between, you know, what the word is actually saying and what you're interpreting it as. I mean, besides, I, you know, I, I've, I've seen where, where this goes. So we had a couple of churches within our network who continued to meet and defied government things and, you know, and they were slapped with ten thousand pound fines because that's what they said would happen. <laughs> you know? Well, that's and that's so, what Peter's talking about. You know, he's going. Listen, if you get yeah. thrown into jail for beating the guy up, you know, uh, yeah, then yeah. you know, don't, don't, don't give me your sub story. You know, I mean, the government was like, look, guys, we don't, we're not, we're not having to get religious freedoms. Very important to us, but we need you to, we need everyone to play ball at the moment, so we can't show favorites. And exactly. um, and so the, it's the standard fine for any charity or trusteeship that organized an event that breaks the regulations got mm -hmm. a ten thousand pound fine it wasn't for churches you know and it was a heavy fine because it was trying to deter the sort of you know pig-headedness that would say we're going to mm. defy we're going to defy your laws yeah and so they got slapped with a fine so now the only difference in those churches and every other church that's you know was just cr cracking on with it online is that they <laughs> They, they had to pay a 10,000 pound fine when everything was, was said and done and everybody else is just sort of continuing. 
And then in some cases that led to like a lawsuit where they're taking the government to court for, you know, suppressing religious freedom and, um, and, uh, and there's not a, there's not a court in the world that's gonna, well, it's certainly not in the UK. There's, there's not a court in the UK that's going to see that as an infringement of religious freedom. You know, it's just, For we're sure. not, the, the, the law wasn't preventing religious gatherings. The law was preventing any gatherings, you know, so it's a little things like that, but um, totally. I understand the circumstances in California might be a bit different, but yeah, you know. yeah, and you have to take that into account for sure. But I think you know what we're saying here is that even if COVID goes away, uh, yeah. pray it does, you know, there'll be something else, and this is good, good, yeah. you know, trial run for, for that sort of thing and really thinking through this issue. Inevitably, when it does hit and when it becomes a, an important thing, you don't want to be uh, on the back foot with this, you want to be ready for it, you want to be prepared, you want to know when that line is and ready to suffer for it, you know. Um, so it's, it's a weighty, mm-hmm. weighty issue. Um, but I mean, I, I know that everyone's listening to this is really thankful that <clears throat> we solved the whole issue in one episode. I mean, you know, man, you know, what I don't think more, you could ask for greater, greater if any more podcasts would do that, you know, just solve issues, just like machine just gun solve, fire. Just solve the issue. Yeah. Just, you know, gotta act like you have answers. Exactly. 